Hey everyone, welcome to Locked On Lakers for Thursday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. Do the Lakers have an offer ready to go for Donovan Mitchell? I'll tell you about it next. You are Locked On Lakers, your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday. No matter how or where you get your podcasts, it's always free. It's never behind a paywall. And Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you can go to hang out with over 24,000 subscribers, all of whom are wondering whether or not the Lakers are going to end up with Donovan Mitchell uh, or Trey Young or DeJounte Murray or some other third star and or near star this offseason. And to that point, Andy, Apparently, the Lakers are among the teams who are getting their Donovan Mitchell offers ready or may even have it ready to go. Yeah, per Brian Winhorst on one of ESPN's uh, basketball or general shows. Um, there said are so that, many of them. Yeah, said that, the and Wendy's everywhere, uh, said that the Lakers among the Heat, among the Brooklyn Nets, maybe the Houston Rockets as well, will have an offer immediately ready to go should Donovan Mitchell be unwilling to sign an extension in Cleveland. Uh, whoever is leaking this to Wendy, it's a bit ghoulish considering the Cavs, while they look, you know, dead adjacent, they're not quite dead. Like at least, at least let them get eliminated by the Celtics before you really start picking at that carcass that is their dreams. <laughs> but but <laughs> if I'm, if for, for the for game five, isn't it um Mitchell and Allen and now Lavert are all out. I look. That's pretty dead. I um, said so we'll dead. See. I said dead adjacent. I didn't say. I didn't say live optimistic. I said dead adjacent. The part there's just there's such a thing as manners. Is all right. I said. What I what I think is is interesting, and obviously the the part is the whether or not the uh the the he turns down that extension from the Cavaliers because that would indicate uh the, not that the Lakers wouldn't end up paying him too or they're like he's turning on like a 110 billion dollars from from cleveland this would be a massive extension uh from them so to turn it down to turn that guaranteed money down indicates that you are not a happy camper um he has one more year left under contract with cleveland the lakers um like a lot of teams i mean i think we don't know who else is going to shake loose yet somebody always seems to but of the players that are currently, quote unquote, available or possibly available or talked about like they could be available, I don't think there's any question that Donovan Mitchell is the best one. I mean, he's better, certainly better than Trey Young. Um, we did a whole show on why we'd rather have DeJounte Murray than Trey Young. Um, so in that sense, at least for the Lakers, Murray would be better than, than Young. Um, but in just raw player talent, there's nobody out there, at least that I've heard, that's better than Donovan Mitchell. No, if you want to frame this a step further, even if we both prefer DeJounte Murray and maybe you prefer what could be a lower asking price for DeJounte Murray than Donovan Mitchell, if you think it might make your team overall better or just you want to save at least a little bit of those assets for a different deal down the road, Donovan Mitchell is a better player than DeJounte Murray. So, Oh, by a lot. Oh, yeah, there, absolutely. There's, there's nobody that is currently right now pegged to be even potentially available that would be better than Mitchell. And the offers that you would think about for Mitchell that would be required if the Lakers wanted to outbid everybody, unless Mitchell just does the thing where he's basically forcing his way to the Lakers, I think the Lakers would begin with some combination of picks. D'Angelo Russell, uh, presumably – uh, opted in or re-signed what sign and traded Rui Hachimura. The Cavs would probably counter with give us Austin Reeves instead of D'Angelo Russell. But bottom line is you are giving up a lot. You're basically giving up everything. everything. This, is, this is your last big swing move for a while. Like You're giving the, up everything. The, the right. Cavs aren't even if even if Mitchell says trade me to the Lakers or I will walk there in a year which is be another thing that would be difficult for the Lakers to engineer, but I'm sure they'd try to figure out a way to get it done. Um, even if that's what he said, 
Cleveland is still, because they have the years, under no obligation to take a bad deal uh, to get it done. We've seen multitudes of trades where somebody on that list, somebody else reaches out and makes a, a stab at a player um, to try to win them over, or in the case of Kawhi Leonard, you go win a title and then he leaves. It's like, it's fine. Everybody, everybody gets what they want, um, at least to some degree. This would cost them all three picks that the Lakers could trade. It would surely cost them uh, Austin Reeves. Rui would have to go in that deal too. And then whatever, you know, other things are required to make, you know, the money work and the trade mechanics and all that stuff work. Basically, anything that they ask for in Cleveland that Mike Gansey, president of basketball operations, um, or, co you know, that, that they're, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, Kobe Altman or, or Mike Gansey want, um, they're going to get. Um, he's 28 years old or will be uh, when the season starts. He is a dominant scorer. Um, he is a pretty well-rounded player. He can move the ball. He can, you know, he, he's he's not one of these guys who who uh, can't pass. Um, you know, he's not a plus. You know, doesn't have a great defensive reputation, but he's not Trey Young on that end. He's been better this year, yeah. and I I think he's working harder in general. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if nothing else, you saw in Cleveland. If you put him around better defenders, and Cleveland has had better defenders, he can be better. You know, mm -hmm. it raises the question of how good of defenders are you putting around him with the Lakers? But there's also, too, that question of, okay, if this is your last big swing, is Donovan Mitchell talented enough? Yes. I think that's not debatable. You're not likely going to do better talent-wise for a big swing than Donovan Mitchell. Certainly immediately if you want to get this thing done ASAP. But... There is the question of whether or not he fits positionally like the best area of need. You know, for example, in the first round loss to the Nuggets, for all the talk about Jokic being Jokic and Jamal Murray two game winners, and that you know that dude is a playoff killer. The guy that truly did in the Lakers in that series was Michael Porter Jr. Mm -hmm. Michael Porter Jr. absolutely destroyed. The Lakers. He averaged something like 22 or 23 points a game on basically 50 50 splits from the field. Plus, right. Like and, and, and before he got going, Aaron Gordon, Aaron Gordon was was hurting them as well. Sure, but I'm I'm thinking Porter specifically in mm -hmm. terms of they didn't have anything for him really on either side of the ball. And as far as guarding somebody like Porter, you know, with the the shooting ability and the ability to run off screens, all that sort of stuff, you know. Rui, we saw, he's a great matchup against a lot of teams. He's a bad matchup, at least against this one team that ain't going anywhere. So it raises the question of whether or not the Lakers would actually be better off in the aggregate focusing on like a three or a three, four, as opposed to say Donovan Mitchell. I started looking around though, and I don't know if the Lakers actually are going to be able to find that player certainly not through free agency. There is nobody that particularly exciting that is going to be available, at least through the check that I did today. You know, they're not, if Paul George leaves the Clippers, the Lakers aren't going to be the ones who get him. You know, maybe the Nets pivot off some of their relentless asking prices for Mikhail Bridges. Um, I don't think the Lakers are going to go after Miles Bridges. I certainly hope not. You know, like, could you, would you trade for like Alex Caruso and have him guard up the way he's shown that he can, but he gets hurt a lot. Um, seen Brandon Ingram's name come up. Sean Devini from uh, heavy.com mentioned that an Eastern conference GM anonymous suggested that to him offensively. I think it would be a really good fit defensively. Some questions, but the eyes also hurt a lot. You're going to have to give him a lot of money in extension. You know, Jeremy Grant, uh, Kelly Oubre, uh, Bruce Brown wasn't particularly good once he left uh, Denver. I'd rather have Rui than Bruce Brown. Like, even if you feel like other positions might be more of need in terms of overall upgrade of the roster, I don't know if they can actually do better than what might be available for them for guards. Period, Mitchell or otherwise. Let's let's keep on because I, I think there's there's sort of a fundamental choice the Lakers have here um, and. It's somewhat obviously related to how good is Mitchell, 
but it gets to a little bit of what you're talking about too. So we'll talk about it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you are into power, speed, style, or all three of them, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So, like, look, I, I think you can, Andy. I don't, I don't disagree with you about Porter. I mean, I, it was the depth, I think, too, with with Denver broadly, and it's it's working again in in the Minnesota series. Although, you know, Jokic being like the superhuman version of Nikola Jokic is also uh, helping them out a little bit. Murray too. getting a little time in between games, yeah, uh, and, two know. and three for that calf. And, and, and then, you know, they, they've made some, some changes in how they run their offense and so on and so on. And so on. They're just really good. That's They're the biggest really, problem. Really, They're really good. Really, 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 really good. We told um, y'all they're very good. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, I I feel bad now for like a little bit bad about that. Like, wait a minute, would the Lakers still be playing with a better? Mm, yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm leaning back towards no. No, no, we didn't say they beat Denver. We said could it have been a longer series? Well, I mean, well, no. The question was, would they still be playing? And I think we both settled on probably not, but uh, it could have been longer. But neither, either way, the point is Denver's really good. They lost two games by buzzer beaters. I think with better coaching, maybe they win one of them. One of them, yeah. No, I definitely think it was a longer. No, show. I'm I'm keeping that. I'm not no, that, that part. Show. I'm not backing off that part. That if show stays. Lakers, damn it! That show is I, staying in the archives. If I no, we're not pulling it. Um, but, you know, if we're not deleting our tweets here, if I implied that the Lakers were going to win that series with a better coach, um, that part I think I should. Retain. Neither one of us did. No, I, I I don't disagree with you about Porter. I mean, like, but that's part of what the thing is. If it's not Porter, it was Gordon for a game. It's like their other guys were better than the Lakers' other guys. Um, you know, D'Lo was better than he was last year, but he certainly wasn't as good as everybody would have wanted. Reeves got off to a terrible start in the series. He got better as it went along, but still was below what the Lakers needed. Rui wasn't very good, and, like, the bench was non-existent. So I don't think you can... I don't think you can look at it though as like who can we get that will neutralize the Michael Porter Jr. advantage. It's too specific. What you can do is like where can we get enough of a talent upgrade? And to that end, I, I think it is fair to say Donovan Mitchell is the best player you're going to be able. To. Mikhail Bridges, for all of his defensive acumen, and stuff, had a, a a regressive season this year with Brooklyn. Does he bounce back somewhere else if they were to trade him? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Those role changes dramatically, which could help him bounce back. It could. Um, and you know, they, like you say, he really would be a guy who could focus almost entirely on that, that sort of three and D role. Or be, I, they could get him. I, I'm all on board here, but by all reports, Brooklyn's not going to let him go. And so at least for the time being, I think it's fair to say Donovan Mitchell is the best player you're going to get. He shoots, he scores, he rebounds well, you know, for, for a guard, he, you know, six or seven assists a game. Um, you know, he gets to the free throw line. He is more attentive to defense than he was. And he does he's not a hell of a playoffs. He is. And he is he's until he got hurt. And, and, you know, and he does not play a redundant position to the other guys that you already have in LeBron and AD. And when LeBron eventually goes, Donovan Mitchell and Anthony Davis is a reasonable combination. Mm -hmm. Davis, and, you know, is you know, getting into his low 30s, but Mitchell isn't 30 yet and won't be for a couple of years. So I'm willing to stipulate that's the best, like if your thing is we want a major one guy talent upgrade, then you offer the house for Donovan Mitchell. And that's as good as you're going to do. And it's not Bradley Beal and it's not Russell Westbrook. And you're trading for a legitimate if not top 10 player in the NBA, pretty darn close. He's not. He, I mean, I think he's more about top 20, 
but top he's 20 definitely top he, 20 but he's well, but i was gonna say top 20 ish with anthony davis and lebron there Right. That's a really, really on any really given good. night, Donovan Mitchell is certainly close to the top ten, and sometimes he's in it. Um, your other option, though, is you just don't go down that path, and you make a smaller trade for Dejounte Murray that costs you a little bit of depth and a little bit of your picks, but you try to improve two or three positions in smaller ways. Um, you know, this is a hard thing for the Lakers to do because they don't have the ability to sign guys in free. You can't find the, you know, the Michael Porter Jr. stopper in free agency with what they've got available to them. You can't find, um, you know, those players just aren't going to be available. So I think you're either choosing, we make a major trade for a star or we look for seven more Rui Hachimuras, you know, guys who are going to improve our depth and build our base up more so that we have a better ability to compete with the Minnesotas and the Denvers and, and, and the Oklahoma cities because we have more exchangeable parts that make it so we're not so reliant on any one or two uh, players in our supporting cast. And also, too, I think internally the supporting cast can get better through health. It, if Jared Vanderbilt is available, he ain't shutting down Michael Porter Jr. per se, and you have to account for his own offensive shortcomings, but he makes a difference as an option no to bother Michael Porter Jr., to chase him around more effectively than Rui could. If, I don't know, you decide to play Max Christie, you know, that small forward, that 3 and D look, like, I was thinking about this in terms of, like, if, say, you brought in Donovan Mitchell and you had to trade you know, Rui is part of that deal, and you lose your smart, your starting. Small I think forward. you have to, you, you you have to assume that in that deal, Rui goes for the money, and Reeves goes because you have to. Right, and I, but I was thinking about like, okay, you have Mitchell, LeBron, AD. Maybe at that point, D'Lo is staying. Um, and you're Probably. thinking about, and you're thinking about a fifth guy. I was wondering, like, could Max Christie be like a rich man's Devin George in that type of role, like? a three and D type option where, you know, Devin, when he played with the Kobe Shaq Malone Peyton group that for all the derision and disappointment and drama of that group, they went to the finals. He was playing like 20 ish minutes a game, averaged like seven ish points per game, played solid defense. And Christie is a better shooter. Could Max Christie play that type of role? usefully in the type of a lineup we, I was talking about with like Mitchell, sure. second guard X, LeBron, AD. Could that be good enough? I'll I think the you, answer is quite possibly yes. Oh, yeah. I'll do you one better there, Andy. I think what you're actually talking about here to use a more modern comp is a poor man's Mikhail Bridges. Um, that's really the, what you're asking him to do at that point because you have – Probably, I think you're right. I think if they make a deal like this, I, the sign and trade mechanics now are so complicated in the new CBA. Set it aside for a minute, but I, I think in the end, um, that's not money Cleveland's going to want to spend um, on on a uh, Delo. No, I'm not for Delo, and okay. the Lakers probably need him back at that point. Well, so, if you're trading Reeves, you have to find a way to keep Delo or find a different gar guard because otherwise, even with bringing in Mitchell, you're really robbing real yourself thing. of a lot of depth. Right. You, you know, you're down to Gabe Vincent. You're arguably uh, getting worse. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. So I mean, let's presume that in that scenario, Delo comes back. You have you have LeBron. You have Anthony Davis. You have Donovan Mitchell. You have uh, D'Angelo Russell. You do not need <laughs> scoring at no. that point. You're the fifth guy here needs to be competent enough to space the floor to whatever, and then needs to be somebody that you can reliably put out defensively, whether it's to cover up for LeBron in some cases, to cover up for D'Lo and others, to help out Donovan Mitchell or whatever it might be, and you know, space the floor. That's or it could be just Vando as a true specialist, like an, sure. a a better defending version of Max Christie, right? And then you can you can you can slide. I'm, I mean, you could there you, there are options are obviously with Jared Vanderbilt where you move you know start him at the four, move LeBron, but and that's viable too. But just in the in the Christie conversation, you're asking him to be a three and D floor spacing defensive specialist 
which was essentially what Mikhail Bridges was before he sort of blew up a little bit more as a primary scorer. I mean, the difference is Bridges is probably 20 pounds heavier. I think he's probably an inch taller, yeah. um, but he's definitely 15, 20 pounds heavier than, than Christie. Well, so, you know, yeah. it's not a totally fair thing to put on Christie, but his job in that lineup would be locked down defensively. Yeah. Move the ball, take open threes when you have them, and lock down defensively. And I think that's a role he could absolutely play because you don't need him to handle the ball, to initiate the offense, to do any of those other things that too often when he played, he was being asked to do that went away from his strengths and his skill set. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think Donovan Mitchell is a good fit. The question just becomes, are you better off making a swing for a true third star, the genuine true third star, that is a better blueprint than um, what they're doing in Phoenix, or are you better off not trying to go so top heavy? Because that's really what they'd end up being. Uh, coaching update requests are out. Next. <laughs> Locked on Lakers is brought to you by BetterHelp. And sometimes we all need opportunities to speak our mind, get things off our chest, deal with anxiety, big, small items. They can eat at you after a while. It's just important to find somebody that's unbiased in your life to be that sounding board or just to have that type of escape, an outlet. Like for example, we do this show that we hope is a nice escape from real life for our viewers, for our listeners. We hope that it can be a stress release, but I don't care how much you bleed purple and gold, how passionate you are. There are bigger issues in life for all of us than the Lakers. And again, it gets back to the idea of needing somebody that you can talk with, a professional. I can speak to how much therapy helped me and my family during a really difficult period for us. And if you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible. It's suited for your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on MBA. So uh, requests are officially out, Andy. The Lakers are are putting it out there. They want to speak to your assistant coach. May we have permission, please? That's James Borrego. That is uh, David Adelman. That is Mike and Nori. That is Sam Cassell. Um, I, I feel like it's a trick question, though. If you're David Adelman and the Lakers call, uh, don't pick up the phone. You know why, Andy? Because if you pick up the phone, you're not grinding. Yep. Lakers want grinders. They want guys who are relentlessly game planning. If they call Mike and Nori and Mike and Nori is able to pick up the phone, that's time he could be spending relentlessly game planning. And so they got to be careful about picking up. You know, it's, 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 uh, I don't know. It's like it's a, a trick a, question, is what it is. If they, if they ask, are you available to interview? You just say, no time. What you see is what you get. And you hang up the phone. <laughs> Can't talk. Grinding. Yep. <laughs> um, because you as answer we know, the phone, you, first of all, you answer the phone, rise and grind. <laughs> um, you have reached the voicemail of Sam Cassell I can't pick up the phone right now because I am relentlessly game planning please leave a message and someone else may call you back if this voicemail ever gets heard yeah um, <laughs> yeah 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 because we all know Andy the Lakers are looking for a grinder they are looking um, for a grinder it's uh it is uh, it is out there. Code now. name Magic Mike. That's the name of this coaching search. <laughs> it's out there now. The the Lakers, uh, who they're going to go for, and all that kind of stuff. But per Mark Stein, you know, so the interviews are going to start happening relatively soon. Um, but uh, per Stein in his newsletter, again, his Substack that everyone really should be subscribing to. Quote, the distinct vibe circulating among the front office coaching and agent masses gathered in Chicago for this week's NBA draft combine is that J.J. Redick should be classified as the early favorite if you are determined to pinpoint one. A belief is already bubbling in coaching circles that the job might well be his to lose in the interview process, despite Redick's lack of prior coaching experience beyond youth basketball. So... It was a really good league, though. <laughs> it was a really competitive. Let me tell you, those twelve-year-olds, they were ballers, man. Are they twelve? I thought they were nine. Well, his kids played up. Okay, <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> I just I remember I thought somebody said I but the point is they're not professionals, they're no. not even collegiates, they're not no. even high schoolers. Nope. Um <laughs> it's, we're confirming whether or not they're middle schoolers. It's right. It, it is, I will admit, a step up from like me coaching my kids AYSO soccer teams. Yeah. Like I'm sure it's a higher level than that. Yeah, I took my daughter out this afternoon. She wants to learn tennis and we went to a court and I just hit with her for a little while. <laughs> I mean, I'm technically- Did, matter, did you go full on tennis coach, like screaming <laughs> at her? Oh were yeah. You ver were you verbally abusive? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. It's the only way for her to learn. That's exactly right. Are you a mm -hmm. tennis coach or ain't you? I broke like six rackets. <laughs> Four of them were not mine. Nope. Um, Actually, two of them are literally yours. <laughs> I'm borrowing yours. Oh, that's true. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> They're literally yours. Yeah. Please, uh, please return those in the condition that I gave them to you. <laughs> they are like all these signs are pointing again. It's not that JJ Reddick has the job, but there is a significant advantage to being at the front of the line at the beginning of the process. Um, there's a big difference between um, among the leading candidates and the job is yours to lose in the interview because I don't think the odds of JJ Reddick losing the job in the interview are particularly large. I think it's going to be a phenomenal interview. I will say they'll probably, you can tell me if you disagree. I think actually the perception, the thing that hurts Reddick will hurt Reddick the most is the perception that the Lakers are this time actually are doing LeBron's bidding. Because I remember that's part of the reason they didn't want to hire Toronto, uh, Ty Lu is because they were like, oh, we're gonna. It looks like we're too much in LeBron's pocket here. Um, so I think that could be the thing that hurts him more than anything. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting. I, I heard Sean Davis over at Lakers Nation, in front of the show, talking about the coaching search and uh, JJ Redick as, as we mentioned, the perceived, reported clubhouse leader at the moment. And he meant, and I hadn't thought about it along these particular lines, but the potential for if not resentment a certain lack of respect in the locker room because even if you ha immediately have lebron's if the rest of the team feels like you're only in here because of lebron right it's similar to what we've talked about with with brawny who for what it's worth interestingly enough connected to this tangentially uh, talked after a combine workout and said that he's never really thought about playing with his dad before. And that, you know, right now he just wants to get himself into the league and he's not really thinking about, you know, dream father son pairings, but we've mentioned before, I think it's actually the worst thing in the world for Brawny. If it looks like he is only in the league because of his dad and the more this whatever team takes him feels like it is a direct connection to his father, the worse I think that reflects on Brawny. Mm -hmm. There is a potential danger that the locker room may not – they may listen to Redick because LeBron, obviously his presence and voice matters as much or more than anybody else. But they may not necessarily feel that buy-in from the beginning – like truly feel it. Yeah. If if it's like, all right, well, I mean, I, I get why you got this job with no experience whatsoever. It's because your podcast partner recommended it. Yeah. It's and by recommended, it's I mean same, right. it's, it. it's the same principle. Yeah. Um and Udonis Haslam talked about that. It was earlier this week. There's a, a clip going around where people were talking about that level of resentment and 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 all of that. And so you know, I think that's a thing. I mean, it, it depends. Like, do you get buy-in from LeBron and AD? You know, is is you know Jalen Hood Shafino going to start you know making noise? I mean, if you get LeBron and AD are both signed off on this thing, and you know Donovan Mitchell is in, um, and and all that stuff, so now you're 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 probably on safe footing. But you know, because everybody else at that point, especially if you go that three star route, if your stars are there. The other guys on the roster are, are filler type dudes who don't get a vote. <laughs> like the, no matter where they play, they don't get a vote. The perception and the backlash to that is probably the biggest thing that would keep the Lakers from following through on the Reddick thing if that's where they thought they wanted to go. Yeah. I mean, look, if this did not work out, and granted, by the time it's truly decided it didn't work out, 
LeBron may be out of basketball. I mean, this presumably will go on at least another couple of years, and I don't think anybody's expecting LeBron to play more than two or three. No, the Lakers but, on that list, Andy, we established. We're looking for their forever coach. Right, so. but let's just say it turns out that forever is two to three years because <laughs> um, that's typically been their definition. Anyway, LeBron likes to – permeate the narrative that he's not the one calling these shots and you know that's Rob's job that's whatever this one will fall entirely on LeBron and obviously Polinka and Jeannie Buss for enabling it if it truly was the thing that you know kept him in house made him happy whatever and as we always bring up with these sort of choices if you make a bad decision because your star player demands it and you think it's a bad decision, that's on you, mm -hmm. not the star player. Because contrary to what people may believe, Rob and Jeannie are actually LeBron's boss, not the other way around. That's true. But this will be one that will become impossible for LeBron to be like, hey, well, you know, one my call, one my idea. I, like, like, I host podcasts with lots of guys. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was on Uninterrupted the other week. Right. I mean, that guy didn't get hired as well, coach. I mean, look, think of all the people that I've done media with that have not been hired for the Lakers head coaching job. Exactly. Um, so before we go, uh, I do want to note that um, this, from something called Vlad TV, apparently, um, transmitted by basketballnews.com. So, you know, I, I have not gone back to do the sourcing, but I'm just going to assume the quote is true because it does – feel on brand. Nick Young took D'Angelo Russell to task for his playoff failures, uh, quoted on the show saying they depended on D'Lo and that's just, you're asking to lose. You're asking to lose right there, placing your faith in that. What did you expect? They put their faith in the snitch and the snitch let you down. Yes. Yeah, so if there's one person who should be, uh, puffing out his chest, about reliability, it's Nick Young. It's, it's Nick Young. I, I, and, and we loved Nick when we covered him. He, we I really like enjoyed him. Time to let this Probably one. Time to let this go. go. Also, real quick, uh, correction, retraction that somebody in the YouTube comment section pointed out, and I apologize for not remembering off the top of my head. When we were talking in Wednesday's show about J.J. Redick, Borrego, and Sam Cassell, we had talked about all three of them being uh, unemployed. At the moment, as far as coaches, uh, Sam Cassell is actually part of. Oh, the he's Celtics. on the Celtics staff. Yeah, he's on the Celtics staff. Uh, yeah, so, if, so yeah, I, I just want to make sure I'm informationally sure there are many in that show, but I didn't. Well, I just wanted that. to make sure informationally people understand Sam Cassell is actually an assistant on a staff for a team that's actually doing very well at the moment, and quite, it looks like it's going to get a free pass to the finals. I mean, no disrespect to the Knicks or the Pacers or the carcass that is the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, he also they, may have a few days off to interview. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That um, might be why he's one of the front runners at the moment. <laughs> it's just his schedule's going to open up. Shouldn't be. You know what he should be doing on those days off, Andy? Grinding. 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 <laughs> he knows what's good for him. Yeah. Uh, locked on, yeah. <laughs> locked on Lakers yeah. on YouTube yeah. where you can go to grind. Uh, Sam Cassell be, is no stranger to a risque dance. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, one of the things we're looking for for tomorrow's show, looking forward to for tomorrow's show, uh, a spectacular comment from somebody who input uh, the, clearly input the Lakers coaching criteria into Chat GPT. Amazing. So we it's phenomenal. We Amazing. will bring that to you and more tomorrow.